And the date is the 11th, May 11th, Thursday, May the 11th. Good evening and welcome to Grace Church Cathedral. This is evening prayer and a meditation for Thursday, May the 11th. If you'd like to follow along, evening prayer begins on page 117. Yours is the day, O God, yours also the night. You established the moon and the sun. You fixed all the boundaries of the earth. You made both summer and winter. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. The psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 74. O God, why have you utterly cast us off? Why is your wrath so hot against the sheep of your pasture? Remember your congregation that you purchased long ago, the tribe you redeemed to be your inheritance, and Mount Zion, where you dwell. Turn your steps toward the endless ruins. The enemy has laid waste everything in your sanctuary. Your adversaries roared in your holy place. They set up their banners as tokens of victory. They were like men coming up with axes as to a grove of trees. They broke down all your carved work with hatchets and hammers. They set fire to your holy place. They defiled the dwelling place of your name and raised it to the ground. They said to themselves, Let us destroy them altogether. They burned down all the meeting places of God in the land. There are no signs for us to see. There is no prophet left. There is not one among us who knows how long. How long, O God, will the adversary scoff? Will the enemy blaspheme your name forever? Why do you draw back your hand? Why is your right hand hidden in your bosom? Yet God is my king from ancient times, victorious in the midst of the earth. You divided the sea by your might and shattered the heads of the monsters in the seas. You crushed the heads of Leviathan and gave him to the people of the desert for food. You split open the spring. You dried up ever-flowing ever rivers. Yours is the day, yours also the night. You established the moon and the sun. You fixed all the boundaries of the earth. You made both summer and winter. Remember, O Lord, how the enemy scoffed, how a foolish people despised your name. Do not hand over the life of your dove to wild beasts. Never forget the lives of your poor. Look upon your covenant. The dark places of the earth are haunts of violence. Let not the oppressed turn away ashamed. Let the poor and the needy praise your name. Arise, O God, maintain your cause. Remember how fools revile you all the day long. Forget not the clamor of your adversaries, the unending tumult of those who rise up against you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. As for the one who is weak in faith, welcome that one, but not for disputes over opinions. One believes he may eat anything, while the weak one eats only vegetables. Let not him who eats despise him who abstains, and let not him who abstains pass judgment on him who eats. For God has welcomed him. Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls. And he will be upheld, for the master is able to make him stand. 
One esteems one day as better than another, while another esteems all days alike. Let every one be fully convinced in their own mind. The one who observes the day observes it in honor of the Lord, and the one who eats eats in the honor of the Lord, since that one gives thanks to God. While the one who abstains abstains in honor of the Lord and gives thanks to God. None of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother? Or you, why do you despise your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So each of us shall give account of himself to God. The word of the Lord. There's a fairly well-known saying that whenever you get people together in a group, the first thing that they'll start arguing about is religion. And Paul, in this letter to the Romans, is acknowledging that reality, that sometimes when we get together, even though we might have the highest ideals in mind, when it comes to religion, when it comes to our belief in God and comes to our practices that we use to get closer to God or draw ourselves closer to God, that's where people can start to get a little ornery and start to argue over the details and argue over how certain observances mean things that others uh, are missing out on if they're not observing them just so. And the church in Rome probably had just these problems, just as every single community that Paul visited wound up probably having likely uh, the same kinds of problems. That some liked to do special observances. Some thought that by abstaining from certain foods that would uh, make them more spiritually uh, mature, or that would draw them closer to God, or that would help them develop a better, uh, better life of faith, a better practice. And Paul is saying that if those externals, if those things that um, are just sort of practices that crop up along the way, if those become points of contention in a community, they shouldn't. We should let them go. We should say, do your observance. Make sure you're doing everything that you feel that you need to do to draw you closer to God, to cultivate that life of faith. But if it becomes a point of contention in community, and if you're comparing yourselves to others and saying, well, I don't eat meat, therefore I'm a better believer than you are, you're missing the point. Because if all we're doing is gathering together in community, to compare ourselves to one another. We're missing out on what the true reward of gathering in community is. When we gather together as faithful people, as the people of God, as uh, believers in the risen Jesus, we believe that in the presence of the community gathered, that's where Jesus makes himself most clearly known to us. When we share bread and wine, and we're gathered together in a spirit of peace. That is where the presence of Christ makes himself fully known to us. And so, if we are doing nothing more than gathering together and comparing ourselves to others because, you know, so-and-so doesn't kneel at the right moment, or so-and-so doesn't cross themselves the right way, we're missing out on the true benefit and the true joy of gathering together in community, which is to become the body of Christ, to celebrate the presence of Christ made real among us and in our own lives. And so Paul is simply reminding the church in Rome that if quarrels are cropping up over things that really don't need to be highlighted as the most important, let's set those aside. Let's set those aside and, and instead concentrate on what is truly important, that Christ is for us, that Christ has come for us, and that we have become members of Christ's body, and that our true joy and our true purpose and our true meaning in this life is to live as the presence of Christ in the world. So, this coming Sunday, here's what you do. Come to church. Don't worry about all of the, the external details of church. 
when you come into the community and you see the community gathered, just concentrate on the fact that as a part of the gathered faithful, the presence of Christ is being manifested and made, made real in your life. So whether you cross yourself um, at the right time, whether you kneel during the Eucharistic prayer, you know, however, whatever the externals are, just remember, if those things are helping you to become a better member of the community, great. If they're point, points of contention, we need to set the contention aside. We are all called to be the body of Christ in the world. That's the good news. Amen. Continue with the Song of Simeon. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, we entreat you, O Lord. That your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill, we entreat you, O Lord that we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses, we entreat you, O Lord. That there may be peace to your church and to the whole world, we entreat you, O Lord. That we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ, we entreat you, O Lord. That we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ, we entreat you, O Lord. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope, that we may know you as you are revealed in Scripture and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. This time I invite your own intercessions and thanksgivings.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be ever at your back. May the silver light of the moon guide your steps in the darkness and the crickets sing you on your way home. And until we meet again, God keep you in the palm of his hand and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.